Today we are going to be creating a nice particle flow simulation inside of Maya using N particles. And you can use this particle animation to create teleportation and all sorts of game assets. So let's quickly get into it. I'm going to get into the FX menu here and let's go to N particle. Now here you'll go to the N particles and create an emitter. In the emitter, instead of using Omni like we always do, I'm going to choose a volume. This is our standard volume box which will be emitting our particles. So if I play this, you have our particles. So what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the gravity because I don't want any gravity in this. All right, perfect. So next thing we have to do is understand how we can create this kind of particle flow simulation. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a bit more randomness to this particle because this is too uniform. So I'm going to select my end particles, go to field and solver and add turbulence. This will just add some turbulence to the particles. So what I'm going to do is increase the magnitude value to somewhere about 25. I think that should be a reasonable amount of strength. And now you can see our particles wandering around the DC space. I'm going to increase the noise level to maybe like two just so we have more noise pattern going on. And now here you can see we have much more better particles going on. So uh, one thing I'm going to do is quickly go to the emitter and make this 1000 and maybe decrease the particle size to somewhere about maybe like 050 and that's it. So let's play this again. All right, there we go. So next thing I'm going to do is, let's see. All right, so I think this particle simulation is a bit too fast. So what we are going to do is add another field to slow this down. The next field will be our drag. This will just add some drag, some momentum to this, just slow, trying to slow everything down. So let's see how drag is affecting our simulation. Not so great, so I'm going to increase the magnitude here. And here you can see how drag is drastically reducing the overall speed here so what i'm going to do is uh, change the value to somewhere maybe like 15. let's see now all right looks pretty good all right so the next thing that we have to do is create that tornado effect so for that what we are going to do is we are going to select our end particles go to field and solver and let's select vortex and this will just add some vortex fields to it and uh, if i play this now you can see some vortex going on not too much but if i increase this now you'll start to see that vortex movement whirlpool kind of thing nicely going around twirling this looks pretty good so i'm gonna make this somewhere about 60 i think this will be a good enough value all right so let's play this again okay now we have one issue and that issue is the overall particles are going up and down at the same time it's not looking much of a tornado kind of thing and if you want a simple maybe let's say if you want to create a teleport teleportation effect what we want is the particle to be kind of going in this kind of way like we're pulling towards this or either like this so maybe in a v shape or maybe in an a shape in this scenario, what we are trying to create is a A-shape teleportation. So let's see how we can solve this. So one more thing we are going to add is I'm going to select the end particles and I'm going to create a Newton field. And we have already played around with Newton field. What Newton field does is it's basically an attractor. Wherever the Newton field is, it will attract the particles and cloth and whatever it is with the dynamic properties. So if I play this. You won't see much of the change happening. You can still see some particle getting close to the end, uh, sorry, Newton, but not much of an effect going on. So what we are going to do is increase the strength to maybe about 45, and that's it. Let's play this now. And now here you go. So here you'll notice that our particles are get, kind of getting around here and kind of colliding. So what we are going to do, we obviously want our particles to die at some point. So what we are going to do is change a lifespan of random range. So what we want is now they are dying too soon. That means one is too small lifespan for these particles. So I'm going to keep increasing this 2.5 and maybe add some randomness of about five seconds and something like this. And we'll see if that's reaching there. 
yeah so one more thing is i'm just gonna select uh, my newton field here and just bring this up just a bit all right so now i think this is looking quite good here and i think i'm gonna increase this to maybe like sort of a point six and from here i'm gonna select the end particles and just increase some more particles here to maybe like ten thousand and now there we go we have nice particle flow going on some nice animation this looks pretty good i'm going to make the timeline to about 250 frames i'm going to stop right about here all right so this looks good so uh, for the lighting purpose and uh, now before getting into lighting let's do one thing let's try to create a collider here just in case if you have a ground floor if you have a plane or surface going on and if you want the particles to be colliding, what you can use is a simple as nucleus ground plane, which is an inbuilt collider. So you can use that as well. So now here you'll notice that the particles are colliding here on the ground. So you can use that as well if you want to collide it with the ground. I'm not going to use it. So let's play this again, just so we have a nice particle filled scene. And I'm going to stop it right about here. All right, this looks good. So let's take a simple camera for a nice angle. I'm going to bring this out. And uh, let's select our film gate. And bring this out. Let's make this 2.2, 2.5, yeah, something like this. And what it should be nice i think we have to move this in the x so maybe like 0.5 value should be minus all right so this looks good cool and let's lock our camera so this is what we have and uh, if you go to the anal ipr you won't see anything obviously because we don't have any light in our scene so let's take a simple quad light and hit r scale this up hit e hit j on the keyboard and rotate this in 90 degrees and uh, bring this out here do something like this and i'm going to hit control d here and uh, yeah control d and instead of moving this around i'm just going to simply change the value from negative to positive and also a positive value for the rotation and there you go so you have the same list amount of distance same amount of rotation without actually manually moving it all right, so once you're done with this, uh, I'm going to open up the IPR here and uh, let's select the area light one and uh, yeah, let's go here and increase the exposure. So let's go into our camera shape. You are not seeing, I don't think you guys are able to see this, but there's a little bit of exposure going on here. So I'm going to make this somewhere about 10. All right, so you, now you start to see something and let's make this 12. So I'm going to increase some samples here. Let's add some more samples to our diffuse and specular. And now here you can see we are getting nice touch of some light here. So I'm going to keep this white and uh, I'm going to increase some samples here. Let's make it two and two for this and maybe 10 for this as well. And maybe let's like change the color or temperature. Let's take somewhere about here. And let's use this. All right, so now you have a nice particle with some tinted color going on. Let me just change my camera angle. Good camera. I think we need some more particles here. So I'm gonna lock in here. Select my and particles. Go back emitter and maybe like 50. And from here, let's play this again. All right, so now we have much more loaded particles and I think now the scene will be much better to see. So I'm gonna pause this here, let's go to our IPR. And now here, as you can see, we have much better scene looking at it going on. So again, you are happy to experiment more with this, try to add a bit more dynamic light here try to add some different kind of thing you can also use uh, multi points if you want uh where is it in particles shading and you can also use multi point if you want 
see if that works for you but i think for this type of scene it's a bit too much regarding the particles you can also use streak if you want thin line kind of particle style here you can see we have nice you can also use multi streak as well if you want more denser particle as you can see here and then you can maybe change the radius and count and length uh, line width and so on so you can probably play around with the streak as well you can see you can get this kind of look maybe blobby surface and blobby will probably take more time to render so i will suggest stick to the points and that will help you create more better render so this is totally up to you what kind of style you want so have fun with this play around with this and if you come up with something make sure to share with me on my instagram that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video